Okay. All right. So this is Team Catalyst's kind of share from coaches that are at Success Club 5 for November. I um, mean, I wanted to make sure that we took a time, took a little bit of time out of our day to help the team kind of understand different things and different perspectives from coaching because there's no one way to coach. There's no one way to be successful. And I think it's important that our team grows uh, strong by learning from each other and sharing ideas and um, providing those takeaways for coaches that are either new to coaching or are struggling currently in their business. Um, that maybe something that you say will spark something in them to create their own momentum and build their business opportunity. So um, everybody that is on this call has already hit Success Club 5. And if you're new and you're watching this call, that just means that you've helped three people connect with a challenge pack in one calendar month. And that's always the goal with coaching from a business perspective is to make Success Club 5 a non-negotiable. If you're an actively working coach that wants to run their business, that's kind of the benchmarking system is helping those three people because it's attainable and sustainable. So shooting for things like Success Club 30 or 50, um, when you're following some of the top coaches, it can be so intimidating. And what I want to make sure our team remembers is that it's just helping people. It's not chasing a number. It's finding three lives to change. And so um, I'll just have Corinne go first. If Corinne, can you share, because you were on vacation this month. So can you share how you were still able to hit Success Club 5, where you think those three lives came into play? Um, even though you were traveling and out of town, maybe just give like one or two minutes of talking points that might be able to help somebody on our team. Sure. Um, I just recently hit Success Club. It was kind of a quiet month for me um, until I got back from vacation. And I mean, I was doing the daily vitals, but once I got back from vacation, I started Core to Force and I became a product of the product. And just that feeling of having a program again and focusing on it, I felt like people could see like my energy and my motivation through Facebook. And I had the people that signed up, like two, one was out of the blue. Like I really hadn't sent any messages to her. And one was an invite I had said, I had sent within, I mean, I've contacted her several times. So this, so I don't know, just seeing the core de force um, stuff that she was interested. And the other one was a sample that I had given him months ago. And it's just the follow up with these people and being consistent. So how do you follow up? If you don't mind me asking, do you have a rule of, cause I have a rule of three. So I follow up with people three times for non responses. And then after three months, I treat them like a brand new prospect and I will start the invitation process all over again. So um, how do you do your follow ups? I don't really have like a rule. Just a second, honey. Sorry, my daughter just came in. Um, I don't really have like a rule. Like, I'll get to the point like where I see if I've, I, all my people, all my um, messages are Facebook Messenger. So if I see, if I get to a point where like I'm scrolling through our conversations and it's been dead for a while and I get a response and I'll be like, if they say no, thank you. And I'll be like, okay, well, can I keep you in mind for future groups? And because at that point, I'm like, I don't want to bother them anymore. And uh, most of the, like most of the time, 80% of the time, people be like, yes, please do. And the other 20%, they're like, no. And I'm like, great. I'm like, because I won't ask you anymore, you know. So and I did just today for next month, um, I went through all my Facebook Messenger. And I just scrolled down um, people that wanted me to contact them, people that I've had conversations going back and forth that kind of stopped. So I wrote their name down. So, I mean, I have a, like a whole list here and a list on the back of people to, to reach out to in December. So I feel like I'm geared up um, for December. I mean, I know this month's not over with, but um, just, you know, just planting those seeds. And this wasn't something that just, oh, a week of a program, all these people jumped on board. I mean, the, these, you know, They've been watching for yes. a while. People yeah. watch for a long time. I think that's yeah. what happened with me with, um, cause I've had a lot of success this month, but last month was a real struggle for me. Um, and I think that last month I signed up for that training. There, there's all different trainings and I think it 
that training was not the right fit for me. And I put a lot of time into a training that was not giving to my business what needed to happen. So um, I ultimately ended up withdrawing from that training. And, and that's where I think I rebuilt my momentum. And like you, I started a new program. So I did the ultimate reset. And I think people got excited to see something new and they got excited to see the results of sticking a program. And I found that confidence, like it seems you have yes. with yes. court of force, like you get that energy from sticking your own program that you want to reach out to people. So, and also like, I feel like I was stuck on 21 day fix for so long. Like I felt like I was just like 21 day fix, 21 day fix. This is great. This is great. You know, and I just was kind of losing you know, my motivation and my excitement. Yeah. Not that I wasn't excited or, you know, believed in the products, but. Um, I think when we get bored, like, people get yeah. bored. Like yeah. it, you need change. So. Okay. Awesome. And I just want to add one more thing. Yeah. I have started like when I invite, if I invite three people that day, if I invite five people today, mm -hmm. I go back onto Facebook and I friend three, three to five more people. Like I'm constantly building up my friend list to, to try to, you know, so you're not, you know, well, I invited everybody. Well, you got to keep adding friends. And like some people are like, well, I don't really know that if, if they don't accept your request, who so cares, you know, yeah. just, so that's what I started doing also. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Shannon, can we come to you next? Because you are probably, well, you started maybe the same time as Natalie, I think. How long have you been coaching for? This is your second full month, it's right? The end of August. Okay, so September, October. So this is your third full month. Okay, so you are at Success Club Six, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. So yeah. can you share some of just even just share one thing that you have done um, that you think mm -hmm. helped you attain that? I think being consistent. Because the three, two of the three people that I that have joined on my challenge group, they um, said no in August. So I have not had any contact with them other than showing up to my Facebook page every single day, and then they contacted me. Okay, so you don't have a, a follow-up for your nose at this point. She was definitely like, had like a million excuses. So hey, hang on one second. Andrea, can you mute your phone? Because we're getting a lot of feedback on it. Okay, sorry, Shannon. Go ahead. So she was... One in particular was a definite no, and she had a million, million excuses. So I just kind of left her alone, and then she ended up bringing a friend with her to the challenge group. So that's ah, how I had success. very cool. So, very cool. So being consistent, and that's hearing your story, and just continuously running challenge groups. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and then the other one was a follow-up. Like, I followed up. Um, she didn't respond to me in August. I did not contact her in September, but then in October, I mentioned for the force, the launch, how excited I was in my follow up, and then she contacted me because in October. So then it's about in between That's awesome. See, sometimes I feel like we as coaches only invite to programs that we feel comfortable with ourselves, mm -hmm. like ones that we've been through instead of opening those doors for different programs so i think core to force really helped a lot of people okay thank you shannon how about you natalie can you tell us um how you're racking out your biz and share like a big tip takeaway yeah so um i started the month actually on november 1st with return so i was at negative two and i was like eh. um so i knew i had to work a little bit harder to get that momentum back um so basically what i have found is that i am successful when i reach out to like 10 ish people a day every day that's like now do you um, mean invite or start conversations or both is it a combination is it friend requests or is it 10 specific invites to an actual paid challenge group i would say it's at least five specific invites and 10 like conversations and I'm okay. total a day. Okay. Um, I have been, um, the other thing I've been, I think having success with, and it's something that took me a little bit to, um, decide to do, but, um, I've been kind of focusing on this, like thought of like an ideal client, because I think sometimes you think like, Oh, I don't want to exclude 
anybody I want, I could help everybody. Like, why wouldn't everybody want to work with me? But I think in kind of like developing my own story too, and like knowing my own journey and like what I've been through and what, where I can help people, I'm kind of like coming up with like, who is my ideal client that I want to be working with? And that's helping me like narrow my focus. I was muted. So your avatar, you found your avatar. My avatar. Yes. Yes. So that we talked about that at, um, uh, super Saturday. And then I did a little bit more like reading about that type of stuff with marketing. And, um, I have found that to be really helpful for me. Um, I just, you know, I was, I think I was scared at first to narrow the playing field, but, um, I think that it helps. I mean, yeah, you might volume wise be reaching less people, but they're going to connect to you more and they're going to just trust you more and you'll build that confidence better. So that's kind of like something I'm trying this month is like not so much volume, but really like weeding through the people and like figuring out like who are the people I want in my groups and like who is going to want to work with me. Yeah. I think I've been doing the same thing. I think I started really doing that last month. Not, I don't want to say being picky, but I want to work with people that I want to be around, that I enjoy spending time with. I don't want to recruit a mass amount of people and have 27 of 30 cancel. You know what I mean? That makes no progress in my business. That becomes more stressful. And so I think that, again, that brings it back to that whole concept of, help three people, like three to five, five would be great because you'd be at Success Club 10. Um, but helping those core group of people and then really working with them in a smaller challenge group, or even if you're combining challenge groups with a fellow coach to have that energy level. Now, are you all running your own challenge groups? Or is anybody co-leading this month? I'm solo. Everybody's solo. Okay. I'm just curious if I, I'm just curious about having, um, having co-led challenge groups and how the dynamic might be different. I've never co-led a full one with a coach that wasn't just doing it for their first month, but somebody had said, um, that they're having really great success with it on team legendary, just having a consistent like partner every month those two people run their challenge groups. And I think that's a really great idea to have that dynamic. And also I always feel like I feel almost disconnected from my team when I have really great challengers and they become coaches. And then like, we're not in challenge groups anymore together. And I miss that atmosphere too. So I think for me in my own business, I guess it's to everybody's, you know, everybody can decide for themselves, but okay. Andrea, our brand newest, newest coach in your first month. Can you please share a little bit of your story um, and how you have already hit Success Club 5 in your first month, what you did to lay the track for yourself, and um, maybe one tech takeaway for the team? Um, I have kind of, for the last, like, four months, kind of been, like, setting the stage and setting things up for starting officially. So, um, just like laying seeds this whole time and talking to people about it, like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so I think that's helped. And I've also so far recruited my mom and my sister and my cousin. So really close people to me so far. Um, but I have some other people that say, I can't do it this month, but get back to me in December. And so I've got a handful of people interested so far. So it's more just, for me, it's just talking to people about what I'm doing and posting a lot of things on my personal Facebook page, which I never used to do ever. So. I know. That's a scary, that's a scary thing to rip that bandaid off. But I'll tell you, it, it's nice to have different perspectives on this call. And we had Dree call in late because I forgot to send her the link. So I'm going to ask Dree to speak too. But um, like Corinne and I have been coaching for so long that we're well out of our warm market for our primary sources of challengers. Like it's becoming, that's when it becomes a job, right? Because Andrea in her first month and even Natalie and Shannon probably are still recruiting people that you already knew before Beachbody and you, you aren't having to build those new relationships right now. Like you're laying the foundation 
and you're putting yourselves out there, but there's a big turning point between, I would say, Corinne, what would you say between month three and six is where you really kind of, you run out of your warm market. Yeah, and I, was, it's, I mean, me was probably even faster, like three months. And I was, that was it. I was toast and I had invited my friends and family and yeah. I'm I still had, amazed that like every month I'm like, Oh, I got more, like more people. Like I, I want like, I just, you know what I mean? Like I'm just like expecting, I don't know. I don't know. I'm but, always expecting to fail. Always. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm in a sheer panic about December and it's only November 22nd. So realistically, <laughs> the same way. if you think about it, I have five weeks to help three people and still yeah. hit success club five. And I'm in a, just complete panic. It never goes away unless you stop caring. I think that that's. Yeah, it's all. And that's where like personal development lately is coming in for me. Like I'm finally getting the personal development and I feel like that like, like takes the edge off. And yeah. Like, like, I'm a very like a worrier and I'm very like OCD and you know, and so like, it's kind of been like, whew. Yeah. It's good for me. <laughs> same, same here. All right, Dre, thank you so much. I'm so sorry that I did not send you that link, but we are just taking like one to two minutes each um, and recording the call. So sharing how we have achieved success club for the month. There you are. Hi. Um, <laughs> and ho in hopes to help the team. So we're all different, you know, maybe tell us how long you've been coaching to give the people that are watching the replay a different perspective. So we have somebody in their first month and then I've been coaching for 23 months. And so where are you in your business and how are you consistently hitting success club? So, um, I started actively coaching in August of 2016, just this a few months ago. Um, and I'm still kind of working with some of my, um, like my, my warmer fringes in my market. So, um, and it's kind of shifting, like Melissa was saying, kind of around that like three month mark, like you do start to shift of like where your connections are coming from and what conversations are leading to those later discussions. So this month, um, there's a lot of things going on. Illness, I'm sick again. I, I don't know if I have a, a voice if I'll make it through this call, but, um, so I haven't been as focused on my business, but, I ended up still hitting SC6 this month because of connections that have been made through, um, you know, kind of through my, my mom had a connection and someone that I had reached out to a couple months ago, or actually he commented on one of my posts saying like, what are you doing? And does this work for guys too? So, um, so just, but that was kind of, so that's kind of like the fruits of the labor that I've been doing months ago of sharing my story and just sharing my progress like as a work in progress not like i'm there look i did it it's like okay i'm trying to do it and people seeing that so now those are coming to me um and i just tonight got a response from one of my sc leads i had gotten for hitting success success club before i noticed that she purchased size so i reached out to her again a second reach out to say you know, hey, don't know if you saw, but I have a challenge group starting. Sent her a link to the challenge group. Said, you know, as a free beach body coach, you know, you're you're always welcome to join these. I see you have size. How are you liking it? Would you want some support when you do that? So she actually responded and let me know like what day she is and um, you know, doing some plans for Thanksgiving, but happy Thanksgiving. So isn't it great when they actually write back and like yeah, engage? I was like, oh, that's awesome. So. Yeah. So that's like, again, it's not like, oh yeah, I got to, you know, close her and get her. It's like, okay, I'm just starting that connection and seeing what I can do to help her. So, yeah. Um, so, and I have size, but I haven't tried it yet. So that's kind of like, to be you able have to, to. I, love, so I love, if you do it, I'll do it. I'll do live video. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I seriously, I love size. It is the, it's my go-to workout yeah. for when I'm having a crap day. Like it yeah. mentally makes me smile. It just makes yeah. me smile. That's awesome. what I know. I'll love that. So, um, so I've been trying to do core to force right now and saving my, my workouts for that. Although this illness has been like touch and go. So, um, but so that's for my, uh, success club. Like I said, it's really morphed to the first few months were really those 
warm market connections, college friends, high school friends, um, you know, family friends, those kinds of things. Family. Yeah, <laughs> My mom definitely family. So, um, so, yeah. Now, can you just show of hands, so, sorry, show of hands, um, who works equally or more on their personal page over their like page at this point in their business? Personal page? Okay. I work both, but I'm having much more success and much more engagement and much more reach and views on my personal page. So that's where I've shifted my focus. And I'm, I've almost feel like I've put my like page on a back burner. I'm still very consistent with it, but I will literally duplicate a post and I'll get eight views on my like page post. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. If you're watching the replay that sometimes you have to just find where you can reach people and use that source of contact. If you're not getting engagements on your like page and Facebook is determining that your page has no value, they're not actually pushing your posts through. And that could be something so simple that a new coach is overlooking or too scared to do um, is use your personal page. We don't post prices. We don't post sales links. So anyways, whether we're doing it on a like page or personal page, so there's no restrictions on Facebook as far as what you can talk about, right? Because as coaches, we just share. It's about getting exposure and getting views and engagements. And if, if nobody sees your posts, then you'll never get outside your market. So just making sure that your, your, pub, your personal page is set up to public. It doesn't have any restrictions or filters or security settings on it. If you're uncomfortable with people seeing your family posts, then make those specific posts private and friends only. And But make the rest of your page a public profile. Use it as a business. Use your public page, your personal page, as a public source of your business opportunity to open the door for people to see what you're up to and how you can help them. So um, thank you guys so much for being on this share. It's all, I'm going to take a little, a little picture. So if everybody can smile. Um, hang on a second. And I'll post and tag because, again, it's getting exposure. It's showing that we're part of a team that's willing to take 20 minutes of our time and not work on our business. This isn't for us. We're already doing these behaviors. This is to teach other people on our team. So I can't, like, say thank you enough for helping me with this. Um, and have an awesome Thanksgiving. And I will see you all in the team page. Does anybody have any other questions, shares, tips, um, things you want to tell the team other than consistency and putting yourself out there, inviting your ass off? Got it. Okay. All right. I'll post the replay in the page um, by tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tonight. Later.